Hey guys, how's it going? I'm actually making this video for the second time because the first one got deleted. Yay. Anyways, I'll try to make this one even better than the last one and I'll make sure to put in the latest info, latest build and rules for you guys. So this is going to be a gin guide. If you have any champions that you wish to see on my guide series, make sure to comment it down below and I'll cover them. I guess. Anyways, if you're interested in learning on how to play Jin properly, you came to the right spot, buddy. Enjoy. So ever since the introduction of Storm Razor, Jin has drastically changed. The way we build him right now is going to be different than the casual build. But let's talk more about the champion overall first. Jin is a very unique character apart from the casual AD carries. He has a very strong lane presence and presence in the game overall with the very satisfying animations. And yeah, he's a psychopath. Anyways, as I said, he's a unique AD carry. So if you're a casual AD carry main or you're new to the role overall, you'll find Jin very difficult at first. However, don't let that discourage you because the more time and effort you put into playing Jin, the better you'll be. So now that I mentioned some of his good sides, there's another side of the coin as well, which is Jin being slow. That's right, this character has a fairly low mobility, slow set attack speed, a reload mechanic where he cannot fire more than 4 times without reloading, which hurts his DPS. However, that doesn't change the fact that he absolutely fucking demolishes everyone. So if you're the type of a player that likes CC, snipers, insane burst damage, some art stuff and an oddly satisfying walks, Jin is your champion. First off, we're going to go ahead and cover his kit and what you can do with it. I know many people will probably skip this portion of the video, but bear with me. It's always nice to remind yourself of the abilities and what they do. Even if you think you know everything, there's always a chance you missed out on something. So the first ability we'll go for is his passive Whisper. This is an ability that makes Jin, Jin, Jin Jin. It has two parts of it. First part is called death in four acts. This allows you to only have four bullets or whatever you want to call it in the mag and after you empty them you need to reload. However, the last bullet will always crit. It's the red one by the way. But that's not the end for it. Last bullet is also used as an execution attack. That means that it deals a percentage damage of a target's missing health. So the lower the person is, the more damage the fourth shot will do. That's why you see Jin's flash one-shotting people out of the blue and so on. The second part is called Every Moment Matters, where Jin's critical strikes give you movement speed and that's why you see Jin's building mostly crit. It's not only for an insane damage but also because it makes you so much more mobile, which is a very good thing since you don't really have self peel, and it also increases your AD. Afterwards, we have his Q, and that is Dancing Grenade. Well, there's not much to say about this. This ability is like Katarina's Bouncing Blades. Only thing is, is that it does more damage the more it bounces if you kill a target with it. So let's say I kill a minion with a Bouncing Grenade, and then it bounces off to an enemy champion. It will do 35% more damage, which is pretty good. Oh yeah, and you can also use this for farming. It's That's the main use of it. And then we have Jin's W, and that is Deadly Flourish. Deadly Flourish is a very important ability in Jin's kit. It's your main source of CC and it's pretty much the size of my... But for real though, this is one of the longest abilities in the game. The way it works is, if the enemy target is damaged by you or an ally champion, you hit them with your W and they'll be snared. Which tells us this ability is mainly used to catch people off guard. It's good in the lane if a gank is happening. And it can maybe, and just maybe be used as a self peel. Although it doesn't really work that well. So make sure not to rely on this as a self peel at all. Like just don't do that please, for the love of god. Afterwards we have captive audience which is his E. Thing is, I saw a lot of gym players that underestimate this ability. They don't use it enough in the lane and in the game overall, even though this ability is actually pretty decent. What I'd suggest doing is using them to gain some control in the lane. They only last about 2 minutes, but you can spam them as much as you want since the mana cost is fairly low. So yeah, use them for some vision in the bushes, especially in the lane, which will annoy your opponent or give you an opening. And finally, his ult, Curtain Call. 
This is legit the most fucking doped ass ability in the game. It feels super satisfying using this. You even hear like the little music in the background and stuff. It's perfect. Anyways, this is a skill shot ult that has more of a supportive slash pressuring qualities than to kill. But obviously, it can also be used to kill or finish someone off that's running away and so on. I don't even need to talk about that. Also, don't forget that his passive applies to this as well. So the fourth shot will deal massive damage. Later on, I'll give some tips on the usage of the curtain call and about other things overall. I hope I explained on a decent level the abilities and I hope that everybody could understand um, because that's the end goal in the end to, for everyone to understand. Yay! Alrighty, now we're going to get into the build and the build is pretty much straightforward. First things first, you have two choices. Either you go for Doran's Blade or Doran's Shield. You should go for Doran's Blade against easy slash even lanes. So something like Tristana, Zaya or Twitch and so on. Basically the lanes you can either dominate or have a chance of winning. However, you should go for Doran's Shield if you're being countered. So something like Varus or Varus, Kate, Draven. Basically something that has a lot of poke. Of course, these are just the 80 carries. I would not forget about the supports because they're quite strong as well. So if you're against something like Zyra, I'd definitely want to go for Doran Shield since her range and the lane control can be quite annoying. Afterwards, our first pack, the ideal thing would be to get a BF sword. Reason being is that it is very good increase in the damage and it also builds their first core item. With the BF sword, the best thing would be to go boots and the pink ward. Don't forget the ward, kids. And then our first core item, and that is Storm Razor. Holy shit, is this item good on Jin? It is literally the best item you can rush on him in every scenario. It gives you a decent amount of attack damage, some attack speed, crit, which translates into the movement speed thanks to his passive, and it will always trigger after reload. Like what else can you want from an item? This item is literally perfect on him. Afterwards, we're going to get our second core item, which is a rapid fire cannon. This item will provide us with some bonus range, attack speed, and most importantly, crit, which means more mobility for us as well. Also, it works well with our third core item, which will be infinity edge. Infinity Edge will give us a lot of AD and even more crit thanks to its passive. Also, I almost forgot to mention that it converts Curtain Skull 4th Shot into true damage. It is just insane. This item will literally make you a monster mid-game. After we build our 3 core items, it is mostly situational. Our options would be something like Guardian's Angel, since Jin's mobility is quite shit. Same goes for his self peel. So if the enemy team has a lot of assassins, that'd be definitely a good choice. Then we have Lord Dominic's for armor penetration, meaning if they have a lot of armor or some annoying tanks, you could get that as well. We also have Bloodthirster, which is a damage-based lifesteal item, and also Mercurial Scimitar, which is more of a survival-based lifesteal item, thanks to its MR and a QSS effect. And yeah, in the very specific cases, you could also go for Mortal Reminder, if they have a Soraka that's being really annoying, or something like Vlad and Dr. Mundo, but those are very specific cases. As I said, it's mostly your choice, but the core items are what really matters here. The rest is on you to decide. Every game is situational, and I guess if you're still unsure on what to pick and when, write it down below and I can make a video about it. Let's go straight into the runes. Alright, so this time on Jin as a primary path, we'll be going for Domination, thanks to the keystone we'll be using, and that is Hail of Blades. Hail of Blades provide Jin with an incredible attack speed, which for Jin pretty much means large amount of attack damage, as well as movement speed. The biggest downside of this rune is that it can only last for 3 basic attacks, which sucks for most AD carries. But Jin has a set attack speed and can only fire 4 times before needing to reload for some time. So the downside of this rune actually doesn't affect you. This is definitely a keystone to go if you want to pound them hoes. Afterwards we're going to go for Taste of Blood for some sustain. As a secondary path we're going for Sorcery where we are picking Celerity for movement speed and Gathering Stone for more AD later in the game. Okay, so before we get into some gin tips and 
things to keep in mind about him and how to play him i'd like to ask you guys to please subscribe to your boy because we be doing crazy shit in here like you can find fortnite stuff you can find league stuff more guides and uh, don't be shy and write something for your boy um goal for this month is 8k subs and if we do that i'll literally suck my own nah i'm just kidding i got you buddy but yeah it, it will be really nice while i'm here being lazy and playing uh mmos and stuff anyways love you a lot let's continue okay so i got it wrong before we get into the gin tips i'd like to talk about his um support synergy so i'm not going to talk about this a lot because there is simply no need to but Jin loves to be with the support that can cc omg like your w will work so damn well with somebody like trash blitzcrank and leona but i definitely vote for trash to be the best choice for Jin. Reason being is because of his insane CC potential and the lantern, which is very important. It can save your immobile ass so many times and make you a very happy man. Also, all that CC creates a pressure in the lane for the opponent, so if they get caught, they're probably dead. And also, don't forget that you have your E, which is going to also slow down and annoy enemies, and it's going to create a lot of pressure, and uh, they might miss position, and then they hooked by the trash, and then rip. Now, let's talk about some things to keep in mind when playing Jin. First things first, do not miss position. It's like a golden thing about AD carries, especially Jin positioning. You're very immobile and if you get caught off guard, you're most likely going to die. So mind your positioning, do not walk into the fog of war alone and so on. Second thing is that you shouldn't forget that your ulti has a ganking potential as well. I actually picked up this tip from LS stream and it has been quite helpful. So if the wave is pushed in and you find a window of the opportunity to go and help your mid laner out, you can come nearby the lane and ulti the enemy. It'll slow them down deal some damage and hopefully get your mid laner a kill. Third, do not be afraid to flash basic attack someone if they are low. Do not forget that your fourth shot deals percentage of targets missing health, so if they are kind of low, you could always flash Q auto attack with your fourth shot and execute them. However, be careful because this is expected from Jen. and if the enemy is still in the lane being that low, he's probably baiting you. If not, he's a retard. Fourth, avoid extended trades. This one is pretty obvious due to the way Jin works. Extended trades will never go into your favor because the attack speed is set and it's very low compared to the other AD carries early on. I mean, sure, you have a great deal of burst damage, but they'll always out DPS you early if you're trading for a long period of time. Jin is hit and run champion, so make sure to keep that in mind. Fifth, this one is pretty casual, but you should always try and call for ganks. Thanks to your W, they're most likely going to be successful, let alone if you have your ulti up. Alright, that was pretty much it for the things to keep in mind about Jin. The way you want to play him is um, early on you're going to adjust your playstyle depending on the lane. The beauty about Jin is that you can either play aggressive or passive and benefit from that. You're always going to be useful to your team no matter what because of your supporting qualities. So it's not like you'll always have to snowball or something. Make sure to look for a hit and run type of trades. Make sure to make use of your fourth shot in the lane and basically rely on your support to do something. So you could engage with your W and so on. Afterwards comes the mid game and here the tower is pretty much almost deaded. And that means you can look to take a dragon if that's done. Um, if the tower is also down, you should go and help out other lanes. Just casual ADC stuff. It's not rocket science really. Most of AD carries are played the same on the macro level. Basically, the most important thing for an AD carry is objectives. Late game, you want to stick to your teammates. Watch out your positioning. Utilize your trap around Baron, Elder Drake and so on. Here you pretty much don't want to try to 1v1, especially AD carries like Vayne Twitch, because these boys will fuck you up. The ideal thing is to try and catch people with your W, which will give a great advantage to your team in team fights, since it's going to be a 5v4 or 4v5, I don't know what goes first, and it'll help you guys close out the game much sooner. 
So that was it for my gin guide. As I said, if there are guides you guys would like to see like this one, make sure to comment it down below and uh, subscribe for more, of course, because I'll make a lot more decent league videos and everybody will be happy. And also, you know what you could do? You could actually join my Discord and then we can have a big dick conversations and eat pizza. Anyways, that was it for me for today. I'm definitely done with my life. It's over. It took me so long to make this and my throat hurts. But yeah, peace out.